thinking about changing locations and shit. Man, get into this motherfucking bag. Stand out the way, I mean. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Is it re- is it recorded now? Okay. I was kind of spin. I was finding him a groove a little bit. I was kind of, I was kind of spin. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to retrack it. All right. So <laughs> this is gonna be funny. Is it recorded for sure now? All right. Bet. Say less. This is episode number twenty of the Better Take podcast. Take number two. This is funny. We. I literally spent. What was I like? Twenty minutes in. Fourteen. All right, cool. I mean, shit, damn. So this is take number two. Funny enough, we were recording for like oh, like 14 minutes prior. I was like low-key spit, and I was throwing some shit in there. Um, and it, like we just realized we was not recording in the first place. So it is what it is. We're, we'll restart. There's like things I was thinking about too that I could like add in. Um, but we are 20 episodes deep on this motherfucker, man. When I think about it, we have been very consistent, which is something I'm happy about. Because like I've had podcasts before, and we've done it, like, um, for those of you guys that are, like, deep, deep, deep in the trenches, we have the GM podcast with Shali, Alex, Josh, and Matt. Those are my boys. And we had that podcast, and that, it was hard to be consistent on that because it was, like, five people. And we had to juggle each other's schedules and meet up properly to do, like, the, the recording. And it was just tough to upkeep that. And then I think I had another podcast. I don't think so, but basically it was just tough to get it to keep it going because we started it and then we stopped and then restarted and then we had to stop again and it was like completely dead um yeah episode number 20 um thank you guys for tuning in man the last two episodes have been amazing not because the numbers like i recorded with jamal and the welcome pain boys i'm not like a huge numbers guy but those conversations were great and i would like to think that with the better take podcast and what, what i'm what i'm doing right now is i'm offering you guys like a different vibe than what other podcasts normally do in the fitness space. Um, I know that my roots are in fitness, but I feel like a lot of the podcasts that are started in the fitness space are like just circled solely around fitness. And I'm just not trying to do that 24 seven. Like, I feel like, yes, I am a powerlifter. Yes, I do fitness online and shit, but I think there's like different elements of me that I could give to you guys in a format that, or at a level that not a lot of other fitness influencers can give it to you at. Like, I don't know. I think I'm pretty good at conversation. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited to have more and more guests on because I, I feel like I could peel back a layer that they're not going to get on a different pod. So um, I'm excited. I, you know what? Do, can I, should I announce our next guest? It's kind of build some hype. Yeah. So like for the, for the last, I said like maybe month or so, we've been trying to get her, but we, we allegedly, 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 we've secured um, the Buff Bunny, the buffest of bunnies, Heidi Summers. Uh, we have the date down and everything. She's in Egypt right now doing her thing. So October 5th, yeah, October 5th is when we're supposed to link and, um, and have a conversation. I'm trying to debate if we should, like, not get her drunk, but, like, have, like, liquor a little bit. You know, get a little vibey and shit. I feel like uh, with the with the welcome pain boys, like us having a little bit of liquor and stuff, it just allowed the conversation to flow more. Because oftentimes when people get on the podcast, they get a little tight. Like you sitting there scrunching your ass a little bit because you don't want to you don't want to say nothing stupid. I think that's the biggest thing. You don't want to say nothing stupid and kind of like get yourself like I guess canceled or whatever, get yourself in trouble or fuck up your business. So um, I think that conversation is gonna be really good. I'm looking forward to it as well because there's there's things I want to ask her. Um, and just get her in an element and in a vibe that she probably doesn't get into a lot with other different podcasts. But, um, anyways, as you guys can see and hear, I am by myself today. There's no guests. It's just me solo dolo. Um, this is like a filler episode. Just kind of give you guys life updates. And then we could just talk about current event topics. Also, I just couldn't find no motherfuckers to record with. <laughs> I was thinking we was like kind of scrambling a little, not scrambling, but like just trying to figure out who to talk to. I never want to be pressed to have a guest, um, but I do like having guests because I could bounce conversation off with them. And I've, I found now for me, it's just easy as fuck to have conversation. Like now the podcasts are starting to get like two hours plus easy. Like with Jamal, we knocked out two hours. Do were we on a time constraint a little bit or like we just knocked out two? Yeah, we just knocked out two. And I just I decided it was cool there, but we could have gone for like another like hour or so low key. Even with the welcome pain boys, we went three hours 
Um, but if you look at our averages, the, the, the podcasts are pretty long. To me, it's a failure if you have a guest on and you can't talk for more than like, I'd say like an hour, hour 30. Let's say an hour. You should at least be able to knock out like an hour with a guest for sure. If you're a good converse, if you're having good conversation, you should be able to knock out at least like an hour. But anyways, like I said, we solo today. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about, um, or I'll just give you guys some life updates. Just kind of like what's been going on. Uh, so recently I just got back from Miami. Miami is like, <laughs> I always say this when I'm in Miami and after I leave Miami. Miami is a dangerous ass place for many different reasons, right? Um, reason number one, it's expensive there. And I feel like if you're not careful, you end up spending a shit ton of bread. Like the food there is expensive. Like hotel and shit like that be expensive as fuck. You just got to be very careful. In order to have like real fun in Miami, you got to spend money. Also too, like, there's like, I, 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 like to, I like to say there's demons out there. Like, there's drugs, there's women. It's just, just a dangerous place, bro, if you're not careful, for sure. I was there with uh, the Naka crew, Shali, Ant, the Welcome Pain Boys, Sam, Keegs, if you're listening, Vic. Um, it was a good time, man. We were just out there kicking it, handling some business, doing some BTS stuff. And it was fun, man. It was fun. The well, I will say, like, the Welcome Pain Boys, like, I'm getting to know them more, Nigel and uh, Kai. They're just like they are on camera. So, like, in person, they're exactly the same, which is cool because I think oftentimes in social media, which is changing, people have, like, their online personalities and personas, and then when the camera's off, they just dull as fuck. But then when the camera turns on, boom, they're in character, which is cool, or which isn't as cool. Cause I get it. Like some people, you know, you have like this like stick that you kind of, you kind of do, but with them, it's like, it's not really a stick. That's how they really are. So it was really fun to kick it with them. They're also young too. So it's like talking to them and shit. It's like, it reminds me of what it's like to be that age and everything is just fucking just like new and shit. And you have all this energy. And then I realized too, I'm like, damn nigga, I am old. Cause some like sitting down. For, okay. For example, sitting down alone, my knees, bro. I know I've said this on the podcast before, but Fuck, we were sitting down at, we would sit down at like lunch and dinner. I'm like, yo, my knees, like I would have to like get up and shit just to give my knees a break. And the fact that like also too, just the nightlife in Miami is crazy. I'll say, what day was this? It was a uh, Friday night. We was at Mr. Jones. Shout out to Mr. Jones. We went to Marion, which is like a, a restaurant slash club. It was lit. We went to Marion and then from there we went to the club. Bro, we was at the club until like 3.34. Like, I didn't get back to the Airbnb until like 3.30 in the morning. And those motherfuckers stayed until like, I want to say like 5. And they got back up and then we went somewhere and like, we went somewhere to do some um, to do some work. And these motherfuckers are just like lively. And I'm like, yo, to be young, man. Because I was like, yo, I'm done. Like, my, my weekend's done. Like, me going out that one evening, that's all y'all niggas get out of me. Like, I'm ready to go back to Houston, get back on my routine. My stomach kind of hurting a little bit from the shit we ate. Like, it's just interesting, man. As I get older and older, I'm like, fuck, I can't hang with these niggas no more. But uh, it was a good time, man. Shout out to Charlie. Shout out to Ant. Um, those are my boys. I grew up with them. Not like grew up, grew up, but I came up with them in this uh, fitness space and business. So it was cool to kick it for a weekend and just kind of like, once again, like, I'm a reflective type of guy. So like, I'm thinking about all the times that we we're grinding and like pushing shirts and tees and shit out of a warehouse together. And now we're like in Mihami, like getting lit, um, enjoying the fruits of our labor and all that type of shit. So that was, that was super vibey and super chill, but back, back to it. Um, I'm excited to just get back to work, bro. Anytime I leave Houston, I'm cool for like about like two, three days. And especially when I'm thrown off my routine, cause really I'm a routine type of nigga. Like when I get thrown off of that, I want to get back to it instantly. I'm not like a general fitness type of motherfucker. Like I need to train in order to make sure I'm seeing that progress. Right. So it's like whenever I can't train, it fucks me up because I know that I'm off. So like Friday and Saturday, I didn't train at all. And then that's when I start getting angsty a little bit. I'm like, all right, like I haven't released yet. Like I haven't, <laughs> sounds crazy. That's like almost like I haven't busted yet, but <laughs> I haven't gotten my fix, if that makes sense. 
Like like I like I met, like I said earlier, I'm not like a general fitness type of person. Like my training is for a purpose. Like that's the difference. I don't work out at train. So when I get off that routine for too long, it just kind of fucks me up a little bit. So I was super excited to get back. Uh, we got back Sunday and then get back to my routine. So I was super excited for that. But um, once again, good, good weekend in Miami, but Miami's dangerous as fuck. I'm telling you that right now. Um, but yeah, so let's get into some other life updates. Um, last podcast, I mentioned, I'm not sure how much I spoke on it, but I mentioned the fact that the Corrupt Strength Classic got canceled. And people are still asking me to kind of explain. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys are listening. I, I explained, I explained, <laughs> I explained all there could be to explain. You know what I mean? Um, it sucks, man. I mentioned it briefly in the podcast, but I'll just get more into it. It sucks for me personally. I was super excited for the classic. Um, I know a lot of lifters come in for it. We upped the ante with the with the new venue. It was going to be stressful as fuck, but I think if you're not stressing yourself out with like the things that you're doing, you're not growing. Um, I don't want to be like comfortable year round. So whenever it came to the decision of canceling the event, I was super bummed out. Like I'm, I know some of you guys made plans to come down here. You know what? A new idea just sprung in my head. Literally on the podcast, a new idea just sprung in my head. Why don't y'all motherfuckers just come down to Houston? Let's flood, let's flood CS and have a fucking party. Not a party, but, like, let's have, like, a lit-ass session. Like, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Y'all motherfuckers that canceled y'all, y'all's flights and shit, or you're thinking about canceling y'all's flights, why not just make a trip? Yeah, we could put on an event at Corrupted. Like, we could have a block party at Corrupted instead of having the meet itself. Have people hit big lifts. I could even, like, bro. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, you know what? I'm going to talk to Gia about this. This is what I'm, th- I'm literally thinking out loud. Like, I shit you not, this is all organic. Instead of having the meet, and I know a lot of lifters um, bought flights and hotels and made accommodations coming out of Houston, why don't y'all still just come? Come check out Corrupted. I'll formulate some plans. Like, I'll formulate like a, like a very skeletal itinerary where like you guys could like, we could go to different restaurants, not necessarily together, but just like, Hey, at this time we're going to this restaurant. Y'all could pull up or like we could have like a, uh, open ended Q and a where like, I'm literally just sitting there. You guys can ask me questions about anything you want to. We could have an evening party where literally we throw a kickback in the corrupted strength gym. We drink at the gym have fun, talk shit, like literally just vibe. Why don't we just do that? Wow, that's such a good idea. Like literally a light bulb just went off. I don't know how late, I don't know if it's too late to do that, but like for the people that are still like, you still have flights and shit to come down to Corrupt, still come, still come. I'm gonna put together something for y'all to make up for that um, cancellation. We could vibe, we could party, we could chill, like. Come down for that. Yeah, man. Fuck that, man. Like, don't cancel y'all shit. Still coming down to Houston. The fuck? Yeah, y'all should come down to Houston, man. We, we'll, I'll have something planned out. I think that'll be fun. Damn. That was lit. Anyways, okay. I'm going to text Gia about that after the podcast finishes. I think that'll be a really cool thing to do. Uh, but getting back on track, it's not cool. To, like, I, I don't feel amazing canceling the Corrupted Classic. And I know people are going to, like, shit on me and, like, say all these different things and, like, how they were super... Um, just like disappointed with me and all that kind of stuff. I think with that, it's like heavy as the head that wears a crown. I'm not saying I wear a crown, but whenever I cancel events or have events for corrupted or better brand, like literally, you know who to come to. It's me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So if there, if there's something you don't like about the facility or you don't like about what we're doing, you like, I'm not hiding behind a wall. You could just like go and say, I'm a piece of shit. And I don't like, I don't take it personally because that happens to every business. Like, if, let's say Chipotle doesn't have rice. They're going to be like, y'all don't know how to fucking run a business. Like, how could you run out of rice? But there's a lot of things that go behind making sure that rice is in the facility. You know what I'm saying? So I take it. I, I, I'll eat that. Like, I, I take that personal hit, but I don't take it personal. Um, I didn't even read the comments on the post because I already knew <laughs> that probably be probably be negative. These days, I don't even read that many comments, to be honest with you, but just because like I just want to protect my mental. Um, but that's a great segue. 
uh, because in my last YouTube video, I did discuss the fact that we aren't going to be having the Corrupted Classic anymore. And a lot of people started reaching out, asking me, it's like, yo, like, how are you doing? Like, I had friends, like, reach out. My mom watched the video. My mom literally just texted me before I sat down. She sent me, like, a commercial realtor. <laughs> She's like, hey, love, like, here's, <laughs> here's a realtor you could use to maybe find you some new locations or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, my mentals are all right, you know. I think, so last Tuesday was the day that I found out that we were going to have to move locations. Um, and, like, by the end of the year, we have to be out. That was like one of the worst days of, uh, not of my life, but definitely one of the worst days of my entrepreneurial life. Just because for me, there's so many like factors that came into that because literally it was like, okay, you have to move. Damn. The compounding effect of that is like, fuck. Now we might have to actually cancel. We might have to actually cancel the classic, which we ended up doing. But all that shit was running through my mind. I'm like, man, we're going to cancel these people are going to think I'm a jackass. Like, they're going to, like, come at me, all this type of shit. On top of that, we got to move. There's a lot of motherfuckers that moved down to Houston in order to make Corrupt and Strength their home gym. And the pressure and the responsibility that I feel is on my shoulders when, when shit like that happens is immense. Like, I know if you guys are unhappy, just imagine how I feel. Like, times that by 10. Because I know, like, people have come to me personally and said, like, yo, I'm actually thinking of moving down here because of the gym. Like... There's this girl that goes to the gym now on a consistent basis. Like she's literally trying to contemplate, should I come to, like, should I move to Houston because I like the gym so much? And I'm like, that's a lot of weight, right? And not a lot of people understand that. And like, when it comes down to the decision of, do I need to move corrupted? Do I need to end corrupted? Do I need to put corrupted on a pause? Like those are real heavy decisions. On top of that too, Finding a new location is fucking hard. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm in love with Corrupted Strength. Like, Corrupted Strength is my, is my passion project. It's my dream. Whenever people ask me, what's my perfect day? My perfect day is going to Corrupted and having the gym packed out and we're in there talking shit, lifting heavy ass weight and I maybe hit a PR and then, you know, I just watch everyone enjoy lifting at Corrupted. Like, that's like my perfect day. And then like, I go home and eat some food. Like, that's my perfect day, you know? So the fact that we have to move, it fucks me up. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. So once again, it's a lot of our responsibility. It's a lot of uh, pressure. Moving is tough because I need to find a perfect spot. I need to find a spot that resonates with me. Uh, when I first got that spot over in Stafford, I was like, this is perfect. It was sentimental for me too because I made my I, I like I made myself at Alphalete, and Alphalete was like on the warehouse, on the warehouse is like on the other side of the street. And it's like a full circle moment now that I now have my own facility across the street that accommodates the powerlifters or accommodates powerlifters. So having, like when I walked in there, it just felt magical. Like it looked like shit, but it felt magical. It felt right. And I was like, bro, this is where I need to have the gym at. And we built it out. We spent the year of 2020 building it out. And now knowing that I have to move out of that spot, it just sucks, right? But like I said, man, um, I'm doing okay mentally. Uh, it's just about finding the new location. Um, oftentimes, whenever you face struggles and challenges, you just have to just, you know, I, I look at it like this. Take your day to feel sorry for yourself. Take, take a day or two to feel sorry for yourself. Um, beat yourself up. Cry. I didn't cry this time, but um, just beat yourself up. Feel your feels. And then after that, start planning your, your line of attack, like figure out what you're going to do next because the world's going to keep spinning, bro. You can't, you can't be sad forever. You can't make all the excuses in the world. You can't cry forever. You can't feel sorry for yourself um, forever. So I gave myself a day. I remember I was like, yeah, I'm going to get off my diet. I'm going I'm to eat some food because normally like when I'm sad or I'm feeling stressed or shit, like I'm a, I'm a stress eater. So I ate some bullshit. Um, what else did I do? I think I, I think I just... I just stared at the ceiling and I just kind of ate that shit. And I, <laughs> I ate that shit. And I was just like, fuck. All right. And the following day, which was Wednesday, I started thinking about, okay, what are we going to do? Like, how do I, how, how are we going to move forward? Um, but yeah, man, it's, it is what it is. I also appreciate everyone reaching out. Um, and, and, and some people reached out saying they're praying for me and all that kind of stuff, which I really appreciate. Like I said, it's, it's tough to think about what we're going to do next. It's tough to cancel the meet. But like I said, that's a pretty fucking good idea. Now I'm excited. Now there might be some salvaging of 
the the classic to a certain extent, obviously the people that were going. So I saw, I did see some people that were still like, we're still going to come just, you know, what can we do in Houston, Texas? But yeah, um, let's, let's get some shit off. So this past, oh, should we get into the, the bullshit? Yeah, let's get into the bullshit. I'm going to bring this up. I'm only bringing this up now, honestly, because it's, I guess, a big topic. I'm not sure, like, how many other people are, like, really talking about this shit. But it's something that just, like, popped up randomly. Cranon and Swole actually talked to me about it last night. And I was like, is this, like, a thing? Like, I don't know. I'll talk about it briefly and get my thoughts upon it. Then we'll move on to uh, some shit that I really want to talk about. But uh, the Young LA and Gymshark thing. Um, so for those of you guys that are listening that don't know what the fuck is going on, uh, I think Gymshark drops, dropped some new joggers like two days ago or yesterday that looked like the, what are the Young LA joggers? The Immortal joggers. So Young LA has like, I think every company has a staple product that they're known for. With the better brand, um, we're known for our tanks. We're, we're known for our tanks, the way that they're cut, all that kind of shit, Right. Then Young LA is known for the immortal joggers. They have like these joggers that I've never personally worn them, but from what I understand, they're perfect. Like they're great looking joggers and they have like the specific design probably on the, I want to say left or right leg, right? Left? Yeah, usually the designs on the left leg, but they have it on the left leg, right? It's like specific designs. Gymshark came out with joggers that are pretty much the same shit, um, just Gymshark logos and all that. And people are like super like, I guess, butthurt about it or what's up? Like, yeah, they're, they're super pressed about it. For everyone listening to this, I want you guys to understand that I've said this before on this podcast, bro, nothing is original. Like, nothing is really original. Um, a lot of clothing companies copy each other. You see it with, Blin bro, the Blintiagas, um, like the shoes, bro, those are fucking Asics. Y'all know that, right? Like, I bought those Balenciaga shoes, like, way back before this scandal and shit. Don't kill me. I bought those Balenciaga shoes, but, like, if you look, they're just Asics, dog. Like, when you look at, when you look at, uh, when you look at other fashion brands, like, bro, they just, if someone does something well, they're like, how could we take that and flip it to our own brand? Bro, Young LA, like, took our tanks, like I could, say, I mean, I, it's not like a. I'm not, I'm not saying that maliciously. It's just, I mean, from what I see, it looks as though they took our tanks, and they also called like one of the colorways that we had. We have we had something called the Earth Pack. They called their shit the Earthy Pack. So it's like, and I didn't take it per like literally like whenever people showed me, I was like, I don't care. Like it, it's not that big of a deal to me. Like I know that's our signature product. Who cares? Like, take it. Like, you're supposed to. That's what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So, I I, I don't even know why it's a thing. I like maybe because a lot of people aren't into fashion into fashion that much. So it's like they don't really see shit like that. I'm trying to think of like other different examples where like, bro, people flip shit all the time. Like, just look at designs. Like, bro, if perfect example too. Like, if a fast food company does something really really well, right? Let's say like McDonald's has their dollar menu. I'm pretty sure Burger King and all the other brands like Wendy's and all that shit, they started coming out with like their dollar value menu. It's the same shit. Like whenever you have your competitors do something, you have to match that or come up with your own version of that if it's successful. So when it comes to the mortal joggers, like I think Gymshark just looked at it and it's like, let's flip it to our shit. If people like this shit, then we could, we could make some bread off of this shit too. Like it's going to be very rare where you come across things that are very unique. Uh, the better brand does it too. I do it too. Like everyone does it. So there's no brands you're going to shop at that is unique. Like from what I understand, a lot of these brands is just like flipping shit to their own liking. Like if you look at, if you look at a knock, you look at welcome pain, you look at better, you look at young LA, you look at Gymshark, they're all flipping shit to make it to their personal brand and make some money off of it. I think what diff, uh, what, what makes things different from different companies is like how you market it and how you put it out and how you push it. Cause that's what life is. I, over the past week or over this last weekend, I was literally telling Shali, I'm like, yo, it's so crazy how everything just comes down to marketing. Like literally I give you guys a perfect example. Everyone in the fitness space 
that sells like, I guess like fast, fast fashion uses young, um, what's the fucking brand? Oh, LA apparel blanks. Those are the oversized tees. I personally love the, like, those are my favorite tees. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um, the, their silhouette, the way that it fits, it's perfect to me. I think it's perfect for like quote unquote pump covers and then just wearing it in casual life. Right. Every brand uses them. I'm not sure if Young LA uses them. They probably make their own shit, but um, every brand uses them, right? I had someone tell me that they like RTs. This is when we're using LA, uh, LA Apparel. They're like, I like y'all's tees over this brand's tees. And I knew damn well that brand also uses, young, uh, not Young LA, I keep, wanting to say, I keep wanting to say Young LA. I knew damn well that that brand was using LA Apparel too. They're like, yeah, it just feels better. It's better quality and it doesn't mess up. I was like, Yo, I didn't say anything, but I was like, yo, marketing is powerful because like literally it's the same T, same blank, everything. So I think people um, just need to realize, bro, nothing is like truly unique. There might be some things here and there that are unique. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Young LA was definitely the first to do that, that type of jogger, of like that design or whatever. And Gymshark, no, like to me, it's almost like, shaking the other brand's hands like yo this is successful this is so good we're gonna try to do it ourselves <laughs> like to me that's what i look at it as like when everyone in the fitness space started copying our tank tops i'm like hell yeah because that means that we created a, a product that everyone loves we're, we're i'm small as fuck at, like compared to like raw gear young la gymshark and uh who else i think those are the companies that i saw that that definitely took our silhouette when it came to the tank tops and the fit who the fuck was selling tank tops before us? Like, when you really think about it, what brand? And we, we call them fucking tank tops because this community watered down the fact that they're fucking called wife beaters, which is like funny as fuck. They're really called wife, like people call them beaters. And um, I mean, it's politically incorrect to say it in the fitness space, but like, yo, them shits are called wife beaters or beaters. Like, yo, you got a new beater or you, yo, you got a beater at the bar or whatever. But yeah, I, I think I think it's just a badge of... Uh, honor that you have a successful product that people want to mimic. I don't see why it's a big deal. And I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I think if you just pay attention to the space and you realize it's not really that big of a deal that you guys are making it out to be, but shout out to young LA, shout out to Jim shark. <laughs> I'll fuck with both of the companies. I like what they do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when you have a successful product, people are going to copy that shit. Shout out to them too. I like, you know, it's so crazy. Like, I never really said anything about the tank top shit. Like I knew motherfuckers were copying it, but it's just like, to me, like with, with, with as small of a brand that we have, I'm like, damn, these guys like, like this product so much that they want to sell it themselves. Like literally go look two years ago. I promise you. I can almost bet on everything I love. We were the only company that was selling tank tops. Like we started off selling black, gray and white tank tops. And then we added like a color or two here and there. And like, it just became more and more popular. And then as it became like the, the typical gym fit, you wear, you wear, you wear a beater and you wear some, uh, some shorts. Other companies realize, yo, like I'm, I'm checking the playing field and these motherfuckers are just wearing tanks. We got to start selling tanks. Now it's kind of like when Anaka started selling mesh shorts, like now it's a staple. Every company sells mesh shorts, like mesh shorts were not a thing back then. So yeah, I think it's almost like a badge of honor. It's like, Yo, kudos to you for identifying something new in the market, and we're going to take that shit. Yeah. Shout out to Young LA and Gymshark. <laughs> uh, okay, so we already talked about the Corrupted Classic and the cancellation of that. I'm looking at my notes, by the way. Over the past weekend, USAPL Raw Nationals happened. I apologize to the people that are listening to this podcast that don't follow along with powerlifting, but we're about to spend the next probably like 30 minutes detailing raw nationals and i'll give you guys kind of like a quick little intro so people that are just listening to this podcast you don't know who the fuck i am or like what do i do i'm a powerlifter and i would like to think that i'm one of the top powerlifters in the world and typically i compete in this competition called uh raw nationals raw nationals is basically like the u.s championship for lack of better terms um of powerlifting you have the best lifters in America showing up to compete at this competition. I haven't missed a national since 2017. This was the first year that I missed it. 
I was extremely not annoyed, but I just wish I could have competed in it just because I'm a competitor and I'm just extremely competitive. So when I see other motherfuckers like lifting and shit, it makes me want to lift. So, um, yeah, they can, they, they have the competition this weekend or this past week. And I'm gonna give you guys some of my thoughts on what went down. Okay. So now I'm speaking to the motherfuckers that are probably here just to listen to what I think about the podcast. Oh, I think about the, uh, the nationals competition. Cause I already know people are going to come tune in for that. So let me sit up a little bit more. All right. I'm going to talk about the results first, the results, and I'm going to just keep it to my weight class. And then obviously like the weight class under me, because that's like the hot topic. The 83s, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It, so the 83 is the weight class that I compete in, right? That's the weight class to where like, I kind of built my social media following from and all that kind of shit. I would say that it was, it was relatively, uh, not disappointing because that's kind of what I've expected from that, from my weight class. Um, uh, and I get a lot of shit whenever I, like I went on a podcast, a separate podcast, King of Lift, shout out to Ryan. I went on there and said that I don't view the other competitors as like competition. Like they don't directly motivate me. I'm not trying to be like negative or whatever, but what you guys saw this past weekend is why I say that. Like, I think the winning total was 815 kg, which I mean, that's not, <laughs> I just don't want to, if you guys hear long pauses from me, it's because I don't want to say anything to disrespect or like cause like a uproar or whatever. Contrary to popular belief, I try to be as respectful as possible because I don't want to make people feel bad. And I don't want people to look at, look at themselves like less than or for what I'm saying, or also just get riled up. Sometimes I'd be saying shit and I guess like it's super cringe or whatever. So let me take a sip of this monster and let me just like gather my thoughts before I open my mouth. So I don't want to say anything too crazy. Okay. <laughs> Izzy's laughing in the back because I'm trying to, I'm making sure I don't say anything too crazy. Okay. Let me, let me just be candidly, man. Fuck it. All right. So Jamal missed weight. I watched his breakdown about it. Um, I'll say, I mean, only he knows how he felt, right? Like only he knows where he was willing to stop and all that kind of stuff. I'll only say things that only, like I would say to these people to their face. My question to, to Jamar would be, damn, man, you work so hard to get to that point and you, you sacrifice so much. Um, when I watched this video, I think he said he was only one kg off. My question to him would be, what, what made you stop? Like, if I were in his shoes, I would have just bit the bullet and weighed in at 83 kg because you already got to this point. You didn't suffer through an injury. You worked your way to get here. You paid for a flight and hotel. Like, I, like, the way that my mind works, it's like I need to put something on there as an 83. I don't give a fuck if, it, if it's shitty or what. Like, I could talk about that after, but, like, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee, and I need to put something on there as an 83. Like, I'm not going to go on there as, like, a, as a guest lifter. Like, you put in way too much work, and I respect Jamar a lot. Um, but it's like I put in way too much work to miss weight, like just way too much. You're there, sacrifice for another hour and a half or how much time you had left. I don't care. Like, that's the way I just think about it. Um, but like I said, he knows all the answers, so he made – the decision for himself and you know he stuck to that um angelo was the winner uh from what i understand he came with an injury so uh kudos to angelo for like working through that and finding a way to get on the platform and 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 and, and lift um that's that's pretty much all i have to say with uh, angelo uh with sean i'm genuinely just confused like, I'm just, <laughs> Izzy's like, no, bro, I'm, I'm seriously not trying to like, I'm seriously not trying to stir anything up. Um, Izzy's laughing because it sounds like I'm roasting, but I'm, I'm seriously not. With, with Sean, so for people that are listening, Sean was coming second to me uh, for the past, 
what, like three, four years. Like we had a decent rivalry. It was definitely a matchup that people loved to watch. You're either team Noriega or you're team Russell, right? I'm genuinely curious. I don't follow him anymore. I don't keep up with any of his content, but like, I'm genuinely curious, like what happened? Cause this is someone that was totaling like 822 in local meets. I don't even think he, I don't even think he broke 800 at the meet. And I'm just genuinely like wondering what happened. This, if, if there was a year for him to win, it should have been this year. Cause I was not there. Like I, I would just think that he would put up a better total or us, or, or at least see like, or like smell blood in the water. It's like, Oh fuck, this is, this is my year to get this shit, you know? And when I was watching the meet, I'm like, damn, th this, this isn't the Sean that, that I've been competing against for the last couple of years. Like what happened? Like, once again, these are all things I would say to their faces because I don't want to say anything like out of line or say anything disrespectful that I would never say to their face just because they're not here. But I'm genuinely curious as to what has gone on with him to where he can't even total 800. Um, I know he's better than that. I've, 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 I mean, I've seen it. You know what I mean? So I'm just generally wondering like what has happened to, to move him down so much. I think he finished third. Or second? I can't even remember. You had Angela finish first. Yeah, I think he finished third because then Lucky finished second, I believe. And then Sean finished like third or fourth. And yeah, I'm just I'm just genuinely curious. You have like this competitive, the best way I know how to put it is like um you have like LeBron and Steph Curry. Maybe no, that's maybe that's not the best. <laughs> maybe that's not the best thing. But it's like you just would think that when you come in second all these years in the 82 and a half, you have the opportunity to not come in first because the, the person that usually comes first is not there anymore. Um, so yeah, I, that that's generally what I thought about the 82 and a half from the 83s, which is the weight class that I compete in. Um, I watched it, just wasn't really moved as much. Um, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, so the best way I know how to put it is I watched that perform I watched the performances and it wasn't drawing me to feel competitive. However, there was a motherfucker out there that put it together. Um in the 75 kg weight class, there was Austin Perkins. Holy shit. That nigga done found his groove because that shit was special. Uh so going into the meet, I told I was telling people around me like because we were giving our predictions for Raw Nationals and all that kind of stuff. I said Perk has all of the things going for him to for him to have a crazy performance. He had a performance prior to this that was crazy as well. I think he totaled like 820 to like 820, maybe 830. I can't remember exactly. And I was like, oh, he should go crazy at nationals. I even told Joey, I was like, yo, I don't and I don't speak on lifters very often. Like I really don't. I looked at, I was looking at Perk's training because he was getting reposted on King Lifts. I'm like, yo, this nigga's, this nigga's repping out 660 at 75? I said, God damn. Then I saw him pull 722. I was like, yo, I, you know, training is training. You know what I mean? Like, what you do in the gym is what you do in the gym. But I was like, yo, this nigga's, this nigga's putting together. Or this, he's putting himself in position to have a crazy performance and the thing about him too is that he doesn't have to really cut weight like that from what i understand he he pretty much chills around that body weight so whether he has to to cut like a pound or two it's not that big of a deal for him i knew that he had all the makings of like a super meat and i told people around me i was like yo if he doesn't total 830 i don't want to hear it like i don't want to hear none of that shit and what did he do he totaled 851 so congratulations to him he he out totaled the weight class above him, which is, I mean, that's impressive. You know what I'm saying? So he has every right to talk his shit. He has every right to pop off and do whatever he wants to do. Um, you do what you want when you pop in. So uh, shout out to him. Kudos to him. Congratulations to him. I think uh, everyone keeps mentioning me like, oh, Perk is the new goat and shit. Uh, Perk is better than you. All this kind of shit. I don't mind it because I want him to, I want him to like dance in his moment. I want him to enjoy that. I'll never see anything that's going to take anything away from like his, his moment that he's having. Um, 
I will say watching that performance definitely motivated me as an individual to, to step on the gas. Like the other, yesterday, <laughs> Izzy, I came into the gym and like, I mean, I was going to be on my shit regardless. I guess Izzy didn't like the way I came into the gym or some shit, but that nigga hit me with the, uh, he's like, yo, what you want today? <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, shit, I'm, I mean, I'm on, I'm going to get mine today. He goes, oh, I'm just making sure because they, they said there was a 75. Would you say there was like a 75 out there that's like out totaling you? Yeah, he said some crazy shit before I stepped inside the gym. I was like, oh, no, nah, this nigga got me fucked up right now. So, um, yeah, man, shout out to Perk. The, the biggest compliment I could give a lifter is your performance and how you are as an individual or just like, you know, how strong you are motivates me to be a stronger individual. I said, I've said that about Taylor. I think I've said that about uh, Jesus and other lifters as well. But, like, for sure, like, when I watched that performance, I was like, damn, this motherfucker is definitely not making me want to to train harder and shit. It almost makes the hair on the back of your neck rise up a little bit because it's like, damn, this nigga might out-total me? Like, the fuck? And it's not that I think he, he he's going to out-total me because I think a lot of people, honestly, I'm, I'm going to talk my shit for, like, five seconds. I think people got me fucked up. <laughs> like... <laughs> I think people really got me fucked up. Um, this is competitor Russ speaking now. I think I got me fucked up. I'm not finna. I'm not. I'm not one of them little eighty threes, bro. Like that's not me. Like I'm. I'm different, and I've proven that I'm different. So, um, if anything, I'm just super excited to compete next to show you guys. And I think that's one of the the biggest reasons why I was so fucking annoyed over the weekend because I'm like, fuck, man. Now this guy gets to like do a victory lap. And then the conversation now and the tide now is like, oh, like, Perk is the best, like, 75 and 83. It's like, I have to eat that, though. I can't really say nothing. All I can say is, like, all right, I mean, shit, just watch next time I compete. But 850 is not where I'm at. 860 is not where I'm at. 870 probably not where I'm at. Like I said, <laughs> Izzy's like, where you at then? We're going to find out, man. Next, I, Like I said, I got, like, a long-ass time until I compete next. Um... But when I compete, when I, when I have my season, hopefully I get to kind of like steer the conversation a little differently. But man, shout out to, shout out to Perk. The rest of the shit, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really care too much. Um, Ashton versus Keenan and, and um, Bob. I wasn't really, I mean, I, I was tuned in because they're like heavy hitters, but um, it kind of shook out the way I thought it would. Um, what else? Yeah, I think I think like result wise, that's pretty much everything that I was interested in, to be honest with you guys. But then just getting into raw nationals and USAPL and like like where these meets be happening and stuff. And I don't want to like if people are from the national office of the USAPL are watching this or like clips get sent out. I don't like I genuinely am asking these questions because I know how hard it is now as someone that's like put together a meet to run a meet and have a successful meet that everyone's happy with. But like my, my genuine question is like, why, why do we have these meets in these weird locations? Right. Why not? Okay. The, you had raw nationals in Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. It's just an interesting location to have it at. Why not Nashville, Tennessee? Like Nashville seems like a more vibrant place more to do, more of a draw for, like, people that are just watching Nationals to actually go out and, like, make a vacation out of. So why not have it in Nashville? Why not have it in more popping locations? That's just a genuine question. I don't know, like, is it a money issue when you guys are on these communities figuring out the different places you, gotta, you guys want to have these meets? Like, what are, what's the criteria? Because I, I really want to know what happened when it's like, okay, we, we want to have it in Memphis. Like, why? Like, like I would, I would have been sitting there at the table like, why Memphis? Like, what, what's so special about Memphis? Um, what, yeah, and the next location is in Salt Lake City, Utah. Why? Like, genuinely just asking, like, why? Why not have it in a more popular area? It might drive ticket sales, might encourage people that don't necessarily compete in the USA, but USAPL on nationals, but they have family members that are competing. They're more incentivized to come. Like best example I could give you guys is uh, two years ago or last year, nationals was in Las Vegas. It's a lot easier to convince my friends and family to come to Las Vegas to watch me compete 
than like Memphis, Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? I, I hope I'm all, like I hope I'm not being disrespectful. I hope you guys are kind of understanding what I'm getting at. So when you're in these meetings, why not just say like, okay, let's have a meet in Miami, Florida. Like, I think one time they had in Orlando and Orlando's not bad. I mean, obviously you have Disney world, but it's like outside of Disney world, there's not a lot going on in Orlando. Why not just have it in Miami? You know, that's a, that's a popular area. You can make that a vacation or Los Angeles or New York or uh, Houston, Texas, or these different spots where there's a lot more to do outside of nationals. And then you also encourage other people to come to nationals. And then I'm sure vendors would like being in a more populated area. You could reach out to influencers to come. I don't know. This is just, just my, my thoughts. Also, you guys should experiment with just like deading the rock music shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys. You guys should stop. So, Okay. There's this playlist that USAPL runs during their meets, and I just think we're in a different era. It's okay to play some hip-hop music, bro. You should have Sexy Red playing. You should have uh, Yachty playing, Drake playing, um, ba Lil Baby playing. Like, you should have, like, new shit playing. There's no reason as to why I should listen to, to ACDC. Like, do they have some? Oh, that's my Ice Spice? Okay I'll, okay, I'll fuck with it. But, I mean, make the whole, make the whole playlist like that. That's what I personally think. When we ran Corrupted Strength Classic the first time around, I made a playlist. And I'm not saying like I'm like, I know everything and like I know the best music, but we only played hip hop music. And that shit was busting. Like I'm talking about like I'm looking in the crowd and like people are nodding their head and enjoying their enjoying the meat. Look at your base now. Look at how powerlifting has become younger. It's a new era coming in. They like hip hop music, like yeet and shit. Like they like the younger music, the TikTok worthy type of shit. So you got to, I, I would greatly encourage y'all to start playing that more and more in y'all's meet. And I promise you, like the vibe is going to change. That rock shit ain't it, bro. Like rock has been dead. I think that's the biggest thing. I'll stand on that. Like y'all, y'all don't have to play rock music no more, bro. Like no one be listening to that shit. That AC date, AC, AC DC shit. And I love that shit, but bro, no, like leave that shit alone. Um, but yeah, I, I just question why I have it <laughs> in Memphis, but those are my overall thoughts of, of Raw Nationals. Um, shout out to the 83s that I mentioned. Shout out to Perk. Keep killing it, man. Um, pretty much uh, in the, the new face of powerlifting for the moment um, until something else happens. But is that enough powerlifting talk? I think so. I was going to talk about the future of the IPF because I know a lot of lifters are transitioning from USAPL to the IPF. But, I mean... I think everyone kind of knows who's going to be transitioning, but let's move off. Of, let's move off of powerlifting. I'm kind of gassed out talking about powerlifting now. How, how much are we in now? Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. So one of the most unfortunate things that happened, I think going into the weekend or going into last weekend, is this nigga Drake pushed his album back like two, three weeks. I'm not going to lie. I was just dropped. I, for those of you guys that know me, I'm a pretty big Drake fan. And I was pretty bothered when I found out that uh, he was going to release. I think it comes out October 5th now, which is also the day that I'm supposed to be talking to Heidi. So I think after we have our conversation on air, we're gonna then I'm going to then go home and like literally be looking at my phone for that Drake album to drop. But yeah, he's not. He pushed it back. That shit sucked. You know what I told myself too? I said, I'm done getting hyped up for Drake announcements and shit because like it'd be wrong now. Like someone's like, oh, oh, for uh, for my dogs is gonna drop like this day. Ended up saying that's gonna drop like you know, November twenty second, which I thought was gonna be you know this, you know this Saturday or this Friday. But he did drop the uh, new SZA track or new track with SZA. I thought it was really good. I like his verse. Not not too big of a fan of SZA's verse. It's it's good, but I think Drake was just like really going in, and SZA just kind of delivered a performance that was like, it was like. All right. But it wasn't like anything too crazy. But uh, yeah, man, it's unfortunate. I like for me, I'm just waiting for Drake because, bro, this music or this year in music has been absolutely ass. I don't know about y'all, but nothing has dropped this year to where I'm just like, this is this is what we're gonna hang our hat on in 2023. Like, this has been a very slow year of music. I thought I think about it. I think Cardi had her moment with the features on a couple tracks here and there. But there hasn't been like an album that's dropped that you're just like, oh hell yeah, this is this is the fucking anthem. 
You know? For me, her loss has been on repeat since 2022. After that, what has really dropped that you guys are fucking with? Like, really sit there and think, like, what has dropped this year that you guys are really fucking with heavy? Because I can't think of no one that's, like, really dropped and had their moment. I know Rod Wave, Rod Wave dropped recently, right? Fun, funny story. We saw Rod in Miami very briefly. We were, like, waiting for a boat or something, and um, he was there. I think. I didn't see him personally, but everyone was like, yo, that's Rod Wave. That's Rod Wave. X, Y, Z. Let's go say what's up. And then we were just talking about Rod Wave. I personally don't listen to his music as much because, like, that nigga be on some sad shit, like, a lot. And that's not me. So, like, when I hear it, I'm just like, damn, that, that nigga be sad as fuck. But, yeah, I'm pretty bummed out about Drake uh, not dropping, but hopefully he drops October 5th. He was in Houston recently because his concert came down to Houston. He, I think he was here Sunday and Monday. I was going to go on Monday, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. I wanted to sleep because I had just come back, gone back from Miami, and I wanted to sleep and eat and set myself up for a good squat day. So I chose lifting over Drake. But I'm not going to lie to you. Like, me going to a Drake concert, I'm not, like, too excited about because I don't view him as, like, a good performer or, like, a crazy, amazing performer. I don't know. I need to talk to people that actually went to the concert to see, like, how they felt about it. But I wasn't, like, I need to go. Like, had it been, like, Tyler the Creator or Kanye or some shit like that, then I have been like, all right, we need to go because they're, like, artists in the true sense of, like, where they are they're entertainers in the true sense of, like, they want to entertain as well as perform, and uh, they're good musicians. So I looked at it. I was like, I mean, it's whatever. But when he was here, he said he's moving to Houston. I'm not sure how true that is. And, like, if he was just trying to gas up Houston while he was here. But, yeah, I mean, if he moved to Houston, that would, that would be a, not a problem. But, like, he'd definitely be sliding in, like, all the girls' DMs and shit. Like, trying to, you know, I'm not, I'm not even going to put out what I know. But <laughs> I'm going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> he'd definitely just have a good time in Houston. Okay, so moving on to a different topic. Because we're going to be jumping around. So I apologize beforehand. Did I say this in this episode or like, I mean, not, did I say this? Did I already say that in this recording or the last recording? The last one? Yeah. So now that I'm like just doing this podcast solo, it's kind of like a filler episode. I'm going to be jumping from topic to topic pretty aggressive because there's not like another person to be bouncing like conversation off of or have like a smooth segue into. Uh, So I'm just going to be talking about shit that I saw and, you know, things that I pulled up right before the podcast. But Aiden Ross is. Allegedly, he's supposed to be interviewing Kim Kim Jong uh, Kim Jong Un or Kim Kim Im Jong. I don't even know how you say his name. Man. I, I, I guess I apologize. <laughs> but he's supposed to be interviewing the leader of North Korea. I personally don't give a fuck. I never cared about Aiden Ross. To be honest with you, I don't get. I don't. I don't get. I don't. I don't like Aiden Ross. I'm not gonna lie to you. I just feel like he says things for attention. He recently commented on the, uh, on like a picture of Meg, uh, Meg the Stallion said free Tory or some shit like that. It's just like, to me, I just feel like he's saying that for attention. I don't know, man. I'm just not into that whole like streamer drama hype train, all that type of shit. I'm just not really into it. Um, but I don't even think him interviewing Kim Jong Un or whatever, how you say his name. I don't even think that's real. How the fuck do you get an interview with, like, the leader of North Korea? You know what I'm saying? Like, is that real? I don't know. Because I, I looked at it, I was like, that shit's fucking fake. Like, obviously, he's just doing that shit for attention. But I generally wonder, like, if you guys are listening on the YouTube channel or, like, Spotify or whatever, please comment, like, what's the intrigue of, like, watching a streamer? Like, what's the entertainment value? I'm, I'm curious. Because Kai Sinat is also big, too. But I, I literally have never watched a... A Kai Sinat stream. I know he was with Offset recently, and that was like super entertaining. They streamed for like, I think like a, like twenty four hours straight or something. But I just generally wonder like, what's the uh, what's the lore of streamers? But yeah, I don't to put to put a ribbon on that shit. I don't really give a fuck about Aiden Ross and Kim Jong Un like having an interview together. But something I do want to talk about that's super fun sports, and to be more specific. It's the uh, Colorado storyline with Deion Sanders. I'm super excited because I feel like we're living out history. Like, when I look at what's happening with Colorado and what Deion is doing with Colorado, 
It's special. It's like one of the best sports stories that's happened in the last 10 years for me personally. Like, you have Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders alone is already a name. One of the greatest football players, like football players, period, that has ever existed is now a head coach at a college that sucked ass. Won one game last year. He comes there. He pulls up, has this viral press conference, basically saying, y'all, I'm bringing my baggage, and it's Louie. Nigga, do you know how tough that shit is? He brought his players from an HBCU along with his sons, turned the program around. Now they're now they're three and zero. Oh. That shit is crazy. You have niggas like I'm talking about like their their games are the most viewed games in college sports right now. Damn near like their rival like they they probably get more views than um I mean shit I don't I don't want to say that but I feel like they get more views than uh, some NFL games at this point. I could be wrong, but when, when when they play, it's a moment. Like, everyone stops what they're doing, and they watch the game. Perfect example, like, two Saturdays ago, they were playing. Um, What team were they playing when we were all at the gym? It was, like, uh, Nebraska. They're playing Nebraska. I'm talking about, yo, it's like we put it on the TV, and we stopped our workouts to watch what was happening. Like, that's where, that's the type of moment that we're in. And when they played Colorado State, it was Colorado and Colorado State. Like, I literally put that shit on TV when I got back to the B&B in Miami. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I got to watch this to make sure I know exactly what happens so I can speak on it whenever I see my niggas and shit. So when we watched it, I was watching the game. I was like, yo, someone made this viral post on Twitter. And it's like, yo, Deion Sanders has Colorado looking like the BET Awards every time they play. And the announcer literally said that shit, too. And it's, like, literally a special moment, bro. Like, when you look at the Colorado sideline and, like, what their game days now look like, you have the fucking rock showing up. You have Lil Wayne performing. You got Key Glock and shit coming to your games, bro. They have, like, legit celebrities. Like, it's way more than that, too. And it's just absolutely crazy. I think Key Glock was performing, like, in the locker room after the game, right? That shit was crazy as fuck. You know how crazy that is? Can you imagine being in college and you got Lil Wayne walking you the fuck out to your game. You know how crazy that shit is, bro? So what Dion is doing in Colorado is crazy as fuck. This nigga sold glasses. The, yo, so for those of you guys that don't even know what the fuck is going on, this coach, so the opposing coach that Colorado was playing basically said, like, my mama raised me to take off my hat and my glasses whenever I'm talking to grown folks or some shit like that, whatever. Because Deion Sanders always has like a hat and sometimes he wears shades in his press conferences. Deion's like, all right, bet. This dude, like, I guess, like, made sunglasses and sold them on a website. Yo, he made a million dollars in a day. You know, crazy off of sunglasses, bro. And I think, like, total, I think total rev was 4.2 million over, like, the, the weekend or some shit like that after the game, before the game. He gave his whole team sunglasses. Like, that's just hard as fuck. Like, that's wavy, bro. Like, having that type of, like, culture in, uh, college football is like special and it, it, it transcends sports. It's just like a good storyline in general. And you got Shador hit him with the, hit him with the, uh, hit him with the, with the, what is it? Like hold the wrist up type shit. Yo, Rick Ross made that a whole movement. Now you got niggas holding their fucking wrist up to show them what it really is to flex. Like I think after my squat, I don't think, uh, I don't think Duhon got it, but I held up my wrist. I didn't have my watch on, but I had uh, my wrist traps on just to, just to, you know, be with the culture and shit. Like that shit's wavy as fuck. But yeah, man, they're killing it over in Colorado. And it's just crazy because, like, bro, Colorado. Niggas is not, like, people aren't looking at Colorado as, like, the sexy university where you're, like, trying to pour money in or, like, you're trying to, like, make sure you're watching their games. Usually it's, like, UT, um, Ohio State, Alabama, some of those USC, like, those bigger programs, bro. Can you imagine? Yo, I got to make it back to the crib. I got to watch this Colorado game. Bro, what? You know, so that's just the power that Deion Sanders has. And I'm I'm super excited. There what's tough though is the uh the injury to Travis Hunter. Because you had uh that one safety for Colorado State that took him out with that late hit. Now Travis Hunter's gonna finna be out for like the next like three weeks or so, three to four weeks, and they have big games. They're playing like USC, I think they're playing Oregon. It's gonna be interesting to see how they hold up against them. But those games are going to be big as fuck. I know where the fuck ex I know exactly where I'm going to be when those games pop off because I'm going to be on the couch watching that shit. Man, shout out to Colorado. 
Shout out to Prime Time. I would like to think. I like to think that I'm adding a little sauce to the power of the game like primetime because a lot of the shit that he does is shit that motivates me and shit that I kind of been um, emulating in my power of the career. It's like, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. If you play good, they pay good. So it's like that type of energy when I showed up to uh, <laughs> nationals in Vegas with the with the fur on and shit, like that's some, that's some Deion Sanders shit. Like he's one of the people where I draw inspiration from because he was super flashy and like flamboyant with what he had going on. So that is uh, one of the inspirations that I have, but he's doing it crazy in, in Colorado. So um, sticking on sports, we're going to talk about two more things when it comes to sports. I'm, so bear with me. I know some of the people that are listening, y'all don't, you know, keep up with sports at all, but we gonna, we have two more topics in regards to sports. Yo, Aaron Rodgers, we didn't get a chance to talk about it. I know this is old news, but Aaron Rodgers went down. With uh with an Achilles injury, I think like a week ago, because they've now had a game with Zach Wilson. The NFL season, it's like low key, like off to a slow start. The storylines just haven't been storylining the way you thought they would. Like that was the Jet Aaron Rodgers to the Jets was like the biggest storyline in sports outside of Colorado. This dude took four snaps and injured his. Like his 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 season is done, so you got that. Then Travis Kelsey with the Chiefs and and Patrick Mahomes, like they're just kind of off to a funky start, not really killing it. Joe Burrow, he's out now, slow start. Sean Watson with the Browns, kind of like a slow start. Bills have like kind of like a slow iffy start. They picked it back up. Uh, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, kind of like a slow start. It's, it's like it's just not that NFL feeling right now. I don't know if I'm just the only person that feels like that, but it just feels a little bit funky right now. Maybe like these offenses need some time to kind of get like, you know, their rhythm going, but I just feel like it's just been kind of funky because I, I, I've been tuning in, but I just turn it on and, you know, I get on Twitter and shit and I just be listening, but it just feels a little bit funky. Justin Fields is a little bit off too. Like there's some clips that are circulating. I'm like, damn, like you don't see the open guy right there. Like, I don't know, but yeah, Jalen Hurts has been a little bit funky. Hopefully, midseason they find a groove to where it feels a little bit more comfortable. But I, but I just feel like this season is just off to a weird slow start. And hopefully, it just kind of picks up. I didn't even give a chance to talk about my NFL predictions. I don't think. Yeah, because I personally think, I think this might be the Ravens' year. I think this might be the Ravens' year. I think I think they might put it together. Even though J.K. Dobbins went down, I still think it might be the year. The reason why I say that is because I could just I just feel it. Like Lamar Jackson got his money. They got a good defense. Uh, Harbaugh's a good coach. They're always in the mix, and I just feel like you know it might be their year this year. And then OBJ, you know, he got rumored to you know be in talks with Kim Kardashian. You know what I'm saying? So you know, might add a little juice to the. I might add a little pep to the step. Who knows? But we got one more sports topic, and then we're going to move on. This is UFC shit, so, like, probably less people know, but my, my boy Izzy, he lost. This was, like, probably, like, two weeks ago. But he lost his fight again, and that shit bothered me because he's Nigerian, and I have Nigerian pride when it comes to Izzy. And, uh, yeah, he lost two... I think it was like one of the greatest UFC upsets of all time because he lost to a number five ranked fighter. And it bothered me because I'm like, damn, man. Like, whenever they were talking about like the odds and like the over under or whatever that term is, I was looking at it. And I think it was like the biggest gap. I think it was like, I'm not sure how to explain it, but it was like a five to one or one, like however they, whatever their sports betting talk is. But I think it got as high as like a six to one. And the only fights that got to that were like when Ronda Ro- when Ronda Rousey got beat up by um, um, Holmes. What the fuck is her name, man? Amanda Rousey versus I mean Ronda Rousey versus uh, Harley Haley. Whatever she when, when she got knocked out, she was heavily favorited. Holly Holmes, there we go. She was heavily fav- favorited, but she ended up taking the L. So it was one of the biggest upsets along with uh, there's one other one that I'm thinking about. I can't remember, but 
The Izzy fight was a big upset, but I always have this thing in sports, right? Whenever people are like, oh, this person's going to win. There's no way they're going to lose. I don't know what it is. Typically, the underdog ends up winning. I think my personal take when it comes to shit like that, whenever there's like a heavy favorite, there's like that pressure of coming through and like all the pressure is on the champion or the heavily favorited individual. And then typically like the person that isn't, or the, the underdog, like, they have no pressure. It's just, like, people think I'm going to lose anyway, so fuck it. Like, I'm just going to swing for the fences type of shit. So I think it's just a lot of pressure and um, the champion or the heavily favored individual ends up fighting kind of tight or they just feel like they just have to do certain things and the underdog's like, just fuck it, and they end up winning. And that's what happened in this case. Also, it just was not a good matchup. So um, Sean Strickland ended up getting the win. I feel like Izzy needs to take a break. I feel like oftentimes whenever you are a competitor and you are just on all the time, like Izzy has had the most championship fights, I think, in UFC history, if not one of them. And he's been having title fights for the past, like, four years. And that's a lot, bro. Like, you're in and out of camp. You don't have an off season. You're fighting, like, three times a year. You, you just don't have a time to relax and just kind of, like, give yourself a break in a sense, like you're just on all the time. And that shit's, it's, it's a lot. It's detrimental to a certain extent. Like you're getting diminishing returns. Mm. So me personally, I think he needs to take a break, come back like maybe like March or April of next year, have a fight. I have like a quick tune up fight and then maybe look to have another championship um, fight and get your belt back. But Super unfortunate. It pains me whenever Nigerians lose because I just have a lot of pride with that shit. And I like seeing Nigerians be champions because <clears throat> to me, like, it's like, oh, shit, Nija, 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 we are up. We are up. Oh, we are up. Oh, Nija, no, carry less. But anyways, let's talk about aliens. Mexico. Oof, that was a bad. <laughs> that was a horrible transition because, like, you know, like, People say like illegal aliens or whatever. Super disrespectful, by the way. But I'm saying aliens because Mexico allegedly, well, not even allegedly now, it's been proven that it was a, it was a hoax, but they found aliens. I don't know what y'all thought. I, I, I mean, like just looking at the pictures, I'm like, yo, there, there's no way these aliens are real. Like they found like alien remains and when I saw the quote unquote remains, I'm like, y'all just found this alien just perfectly pre preserved. Like this shit looks like a fucking, it looks like that. Uh, what's that one alien that was like, they used to be super viral. They used to like just be doing crazy shit. It's like that meme of like when you, when you smoke too much and like you're just on the couch and it's like a fucking alien. It literally just looked like that. And I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all really think that's a real ass alien. I don't even think. Okay. So let's back up a little bit. I think aliens exist. I don't even think it's a conspiracy theory or a wild concept. Bro, the, the galaxy and the universe is so fucking big. Do you think, do you really think we're the only life forms in existence? Like, do you really think that? Because I, I personally don't. I think that there's something somewhere. I don't know if they made contact with us already. I don't know what. But I, I do believe there are other sentient organisms organisms that exist other than earth for sure just don't know what i don't know what they look like i have no hypothesis in, in regards to that i just think that there is way too big of a i don't even know like if universe is like even the the right word to use because it's so vast we are just a speck of dust if that you know Existence is so broad. To think that we're the only ones that are here, I, I just I just think that's uh, thinking short-sighted. Thinking short-sighted. So, yeah, I think the aliens exist. I just think that I, 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 don't, I don't think we know what they actually look like. They probably look like... They could just be like a, a ball of just like... I don't fucking know. Who knows, bro? Like, aliens could have like a fucking dick for a head. Like, what we think a dick looks like, I don't know where that why my mind went to that immediately, but like we generally don't know what an alien looks like, or at least shit. 
the general public doesn't. Maybe the government does. Because they announced that aliens exist and no one said anything. Like, someone said, I think it was from, like, uh, one of the intelligent agencies or some shit like that. He was, like, a person that, like, was just testifying or whatever. But he basically says, like, yeah, we, there are some UFOs and, like, we, we believe aliens exist. And no one really said anything. But I truly believe that aliens exist. And I feel like the government has more information in regards to that than we would like to believe. Um, I read something somewhere where, like, they're hesitant or they were hesitant before because they didn't know how the general public would react to the news of aliens being like actually real. Um, but I personally think that aliens do exist. Just don't know exactly like what they look like or like what the concept of, of a alien is quote unquote. I'm not sure if they've actually made contact with us. Maybe, maybe, Oh, I was going to say something, but I was like, mm, that's not, that's not head ass enough. Cause I was going to say like, maybe like some of the aliens that exist are here and they just like mask themselves amongst us to kind of figure out like how we are. You know, those motherfuckers like, do you, okay. Do you guys have a friend that's just like completely off and you're like, man, your social cues are, your, your social cues are just off. I, sometimes I'd be thinking, I'm like, are you like, you might be an alien that is like, just kind of like, kind of just like planted themselves here and you're just kind of figure out how to you're trying to figure out how to operate in life that's what i'd be thinking sometimes um but yeah i mean i think aliens are real man mexico get your shit together i mean it was already kind of like reported that 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 dude that quote unquote found the alien remains he was like a known like conspiracy 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 theorist it's a mouthful but let me take a sip of this uh And as you drink and continue on with the different topics that we have. Oh, oh shit. This is funny. Not, oh no, no, no. It's not funny. It's going to be, talk, it's going to be interesting to talk about. Damn, I almost dropped my shit. So now we're going to move on to like relationships and shit because, um, over the last couple of days, bro, couples were breaking the fuck up. When I was on my flight to Miami, I think on my flight back to Miami. Yeah. Maybe I'm maybe on my way to Miami. It was reported that Jeannie Mai and Jeezy were splitting. And they had been married for two years. And they were, I mean, shit. I remember during the pandemic and like of 20, like I remember during the pandemic and then 21, uh, 2021 and 2022, they were going super viral because like they had gotten together and, you know, they were a beautiful couple. And she would be like on The View talking about the relationship and like, just, you know, giving relationship advice as to, like, how to go about things. And just, you know, she's super open about, like, her life and, like, what she was doing. And, you know, everyone's, like, oh, these are my goals and type of shit. Uh, these are my relationship goals type shit. And they're splitting. And he filed for a divorce. And then you also have Tiana Taylor posting on social media that her and Amon Shumpert had been split for a minute. And... um I'm just like, everyone's like just kind of saying like the world's ending and like I have no hope for my relationship and X, Y, and Z. I think people need to, need to slow the fuck down. <laughs> like, I don't know why you guys look at celebrities as like the gold standard as to like what you, what your relationship should be like. You also have to come into, you also have to realize like the divorce rate in America is at like 50%, if not more or maybe slightly less, but like around 50%. So people get divorced all the time or people split all the time too. And marriage is becoming more and more of like two separate entities coming together, but also still being separate entities, right? So what I mean by that is that people are getting smarter when it comes to prenups and um, coming into a relationship, but also knowing that when they leave that relationship, they're still going to have all the shit that they came in with. And I think that makes it a lot easier to make those splits. So Jeezy and Jenny Mai, I think they had like a prenup signed before. So it's like, if you feel unhappy in the relationship, you're not going to stick it through. You're just going to split because like, there's no like real, I don't, I don't want to say incentive to stay together, but it's like, we don't have to work this out. We can split and then just kind of like revert back to what we were before when we got together. And I think that make, that plays a big role because a lot of these couples are starting to understand like, yo, we can just 
call it quits and we don't have to work through things, which is a lot different than what people were doing in the past where it's like, you should stick it through. But it's, it's interesting to see people's obsession with these celebrities when it comes to the relationship aspects of things, because it's like, Oh, I want to be like Jeannie Mai and, and, and Jeezy, or I want to be like Beyonce and Jay Z, or I want to be like Kim and Kanye. It's like, bro, like these are normal people too, that deal with, deal with like shit that y'all don't see. And their shit is probably more toxic than what you're dealing with. So don't, don't hold and put these like relationships on a pedestal because it's like, yo, they're normal people, bro. I'm telling you, they may look good. Like maybe like just like how they look, you might want to look something like that, but don't look at their actual relationship and be like, I want something exactly like that because chances are the shit that you got is probably more authentic than the shit that they're presenting to you guys. So when it comes to the relationship thing, bro, it's just interesting to see like whenever people get so worked up about them splitting, but it is interesting whenever the man is the one that files first. Um, but I'm sure there's more information that's going to come out from that. But I know it was like a super like big topic that people were talking about on social media, but yeah, flash, uh, what's the word flash news or, or flash some shit. I'm gonna start laughing. Cause like, was it flash news? Flash. <laughs> yeah. News flash. God damn, bro. Damn. News flash. Couples break up. Couples get back together. It is what it is. Like, it's not that big of a deal that y'all are making it out to be. Um, but there was like this cool conversation that Steve Harvey had recently. No, no, no Steve Harvey. <laughs> Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry was like on a podcast discussing that women should, I guess, like alter their standards. So, okay. The context of this conversation, I'm going to lay it out for you guys so I don't like fuck everything up. Let me take a sip of a, uh, let me take a sip of a uh, monster before I continue. Hmm. Okay. So Tyler Perry was talking about how in society now, I'm pretty sure black women in comparison to black men are more educated and they make more money, right? At this particular moment. Um, than black men. So what he was encouraging them to do was like, yo, change your, not change your standards, but understand that whenever you're looking for a partner, your partner may not make as much money than you, as much money as you. Uh, but is that person loving? Is that person caring? Does he fill all your needs? Like all that kind of shit. You should look at that person and give him a chance. And a lot of people were, uh, kind of mad about that. Cause it's like, why are you telling black, black women to settle for less um, when you could tell black men to push themselves to higher heights to meet said standards of uh, these women. And to me, this just comes down to understanding the playing field and playing the playing field as it is. Um, Cause it could be, it could go both ways. Like obviously you want men to be better men in general. And that means working hard and having a good job that makes money and all that kind of stuff. But to me, money isn't the end all be all. Like, I feel like as a woman, you want someone that is going to protect and provide for you, but that doesn't mean that 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 man has to be making like six figures. It just means that he protects and values you. That means emotionally and maybe somewhat financially, but not in its uh, entirety, right? Because at the same time too, I think people will be wanting like a husband when they're only dating. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Right. So I'm gonna say that again. I think people want like grown up married relationships when they're only dating someone. It's like you're dating someone, but you want them to provide for you and care for you and take care of you. It's like, bro, like y'all just dating. You don't have a ring on your finger yet. You know what I'm saying? That goes for the women too. Like you don't have to be giving like this dude, like wifey, type of privileges when you're not married to him. Um, but just getting back to the conversation, women, when you get to a point, right, when you're checking the field for a partner, understand the field that you're checking. Look at the current climate of things. Um, it's almost like 
when you're seven foot tall, if you're, okay, no, I'm not going to say seven foot tall. If you're a six foot girl, right? And you're saying, I don't want anyone that is shorter than me. You, you have, <laughs> you have limited your dating pool. So like the average height for a male is like five, nine, right? So now you have eliminated probably like 70 to 80% of the male population and you're only working with 20%. So the chances of you finding a male or a man of your liking is going to be extremely tough. And you probably going to be on a dry spell for a little bit because it's just going to be extremely hard for you to find a partner that's going to live up to the personal standards that you have for yourself. And I mean, that's not bad. And, but you have to understand, yo, you probably going to go a long time without a man. Now, you might look and find a little short king. He might not be above six foot, but he going to fill all the needs that you have. So you have to take that into consideration. Maybe I'm just also shouting out to the short kings out there. You, you, you missing out, bro. We, 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 you know, I'm a five, six nigga, you know, but you know, I, you know, I, I can feel your needs. Not specifically. I'm not saying like I can, I'm just saying like short people are valuable as well. But that, that blends into the conversation too, like money-wise. I don't know why, I don't know where this came from, but it's like, oh, he needs to make six figures. Bro, who, making six figures is abnormal. I don't have the numbers in front of me and I'm not too sure if it's still accurate, but I think only 1% of Americans make six figures, right? Is that right? Yeah, you're going to look it up? Because that's going to be important to the conversation, bro. I'm not sure why people think that coming across six a six figure nigga is like a normal thing. What's that? What's that song? Rich ass nigga, give a fuck about bit six. Figure. I don't know. Oh, for real, make six figures? Oh shit, my fault. <laughs> so is he saying thirty three percent of Americans make over six figures? Really? Damn, I feel like that's new. Hmm. I feel it really. 33% of Americans make over six figures. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Eight, okay. So let's clear that up. 33% of households make six figures, but only 18% of individuals make six figures in America. So when, I, when we say households, basically that means two, uh, two income household. So male and female or male and male or female and female, right? So two individuals make up six figures. So that basically means like one person makes 50 grand a year. The other person makes 50 grand a year in the household that equates to hundred grand versus like an individual, that individual by themselves makes six figures. So only 18. So when you say like, I only want someone that makes eight, uh, six figures, you have deleted 88%, uh, 82% of the pop maybe even less than that because like for men it has to be less than that right the amount of people that make six figures that are male has to be like maybe let's say probably like 11 or 15 percent or some shit like that you have to realize like you have just eliminated 82 percent if not more of the dating pool and then you have to be realistic like are you an eight like do you got eight figure coochie i mean uh six figure coochie are you a six figure um, woman? Like, do you, what about you demands a man that makes six figures? You know, you have to ask these real questions because when you have these staunch um, ideas of what a man should be for you, you limit, right? I'm not saying you need to accept any and everything that comes your way. Just be understanding and understand when you set these expectations and these values for yourself, it's just going to make your dating pool a lot smaller. And I think, like, I know, I'm going to say this name, and I know a lot of people are going to fucking be mad. That's what a lot of Kevin Samuels would preach. It's like, even he would even say it to me. He's like, Look, Kevin Samuels will break me down. You're five six, <laughs> You know? Um, I don't know. Shit, what else negative can you say about me? you five six. He He'll ask me, how, how attractive do I think I am? I give myself like, you know, let's say I'll give myself a seven. He's like, all right, so you a seven, seven and a half, you five, six. Women want a six foot dude 
that's a 10 or no, you want this particular type of woman that's like a 10, but that woman is looking for a dude that's making six figures. You'll probably say like got a big ass dick or whatever. Um, it's, uh, did I say six foot already? But six foot, six figures, big ass meat, um, got motion like that, probably could dress well, all that type of shit, right? What makes you think that woman's going to want you, right? So you have to almost, it's it sucks, and you have to take emotion out of it. You have to speak a little bit more with your head and think a little bit more with your head and understand like, yo, like, all right, this is kind of like my market value. You know what I'm saying? Men often understand and know their market value and they know what type of women they could pull and they know like, okay, like, all right, so I'm, you know, I'm, look, I'm, I'm going to set my market value. Okay. I'm five, six. I think I'm pretty handsome. I'm, I'm, I'm decent looking, you know, I'm decent looking. I'm relatively successful. You know, I'm a little, I'm a little six figure nigga. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I understand my particular market value. I know I know the type of women that I can try. I work out. I'm, I'm, you know, I take care of myself. I think I got a little motion. Um, I know how to dress. My, what is it? My, my inner circle and shit like that. Like I'm, I like to say I'm pretty, I'm decently well connected. So my market value, I understand it. I understand the type of women I could get. I understand, um, how far I could throw my lifeline to attract women. Um, so I understand that. And I equate everything that I bring to the table. And I know the type of women that I can reach out to. And I feel very comfortable uh, with the type of women I reach out to because I don't over exceed my, I guess, like my market value in a sense. And I think at the end of the day, you just need to figure out what your market value is. Do an assessment of yourself. And if you don't, have the market value that you want, put yourself in a position to, you know, let's, let's put it like this. If you want like a baddie, you know, let's say you want a baddie. Okay. Make myself into what, I mean, not make yourself directly into what that baddie would want, but make yourself into an individual that a baddie would want. That's the best way to put it. In my personal opinion, if you want like a certain type of woman, if you want like a smart, intelligent woman that, has like these these uh, these wholesome values, then make yourself into an individual that a smart, intelligent woman that has wholesome values would want, which is probably like a wholesome type of person that is uh, well educated, stays at home, and, and 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 is a provider and all that kind of shit. So, it's just understanding like who you are as an individual and what do you want, and do you need to change some things about you to get the type of women or the type of man that you want? And I think that a lot of people get dating fucked up because it's like you're a piece of shit, but you want like a wholesome woman that like, that has never done anything in her life. And it's like, bro, like that wholesome woman that has probably never done anything in her life is looking for a person that kind of reflects that versus like you are a piece of shit individual, but you're looking for someone that probably isn't going to get into your line of, uh, um, into your dating life. But that's all the topics that I have written down. I did ask people to, the fuck is this? Hmm. I did ask people to kind of like ask me different topics they would want me to cover in today's podcast. And there were some good ones. So I'm going to run through them and then that'll be the end of today's episode. But there are some good ones. So let's go ahead and run them down. This motherfucker, Nigel, asked me, do I watch hentai? No, nigga, do not watch hentai. Drake posted, he watched, Drake posted hentai one time. So question though, is there anyone listening that watches hentai? Would you watch would you watch hentai? Like like cartoons fucking? <laughs> that is great. Like, how could I watch an anime and get my like how can my dick get hard from watching like cartoons? Gen like I'm genuinely asking, like, how 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 does that happen? Yeah, no, bro, that's a thing. Like watching Bart Simpson like have sex. Or like uh Marge or some shit. I don't know. I don't I don't get I don't get that type of shit. Comment in the comment section if you, <laughs> if you watch hentai. It's a safe space. We're not going to judge you. I'm just genuinely curious. Uh, Tamara Watkins asked me about Powerton becoming more popular. 
I mean, I've spoken on the podcast before. I think um, it's no secret that Palpatine is becoming more popular. I think um, right now it's the cool thing for influencers to do. It's kind of died down a little bit. But it's definitely like, oh, like I'm, I'm a fitness influencer. One of the low barriers entry sports that I could do is powerlifting. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, it's gotten more popular with more popularity comes like more um, people that are just kind of like spreading the word of powerlifting. Like you have like Will Tennyson, you had uh, Jesse James do some powerlifting meets. Tyler One does this uh, powerlifting competition on live stream and shit. So um, yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think uh, people are representing powerlifting in a good in a good light as well. So, no problems with that. I think it's a good thing, and um, I wish it. I hope it continues. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, this one's a little above me. Someone asked about fossil fuels and climate catastrophe. <laughs> hey man, I'm sorry. I ain't got nothing for you. That's a little bit. This, that's a little bit above my head, bro. Someone asked about Jamar missing weight. Already talked about that. Already talked about the Gymshark copy, the young LA joggers. Actually, let me let me take a quick restroom break. So I'm literally about to like explode. <laughs> let me. I'm gonna come back. Let me take a quick restroom break. I don't think I understand like how fucking hot these lights are, bro. Like the back of my legs be sweating, my hamstrings sweating, the, my back sweating. I'm not pitting though. I mean, tea is so damn big. Like you can't really see shit. Um, okay. All right. Comfortable answer some more of these uh these questions. Also, too, if you guys can let me know if there's any like we need a I'm gonna try to formulate, I'm gonna sit up one of these days and formula like segments to begin the podcast. So when we have guests and shit, there's like segments that I could ask them or just like segments that are just like non-negotiable and they have to like participate. So I think that'd be cool. <clears throat> okay. Scrolling. Oh, no. Y'all be asking about piloting and shit. Okay, so why is... Let's... I mean, fuck it. If you guys want to talk about piloting for a little bit, let's do it. I mean, we're already here. Okay, so someone asked how to make powerlifting... <laughs> ways to make power... Ways to make powerlifting money. How to be a pro starting a gym. Let's just get on the, the topic of, like, how can you make money as a powerlifter? There's a lot of different ways, to be honest with you. Um, you could, number one, be a coach. You could be a lifter and be decent and garner sponsorships, but that's a little bit harder because you actually have to be good. And you actually have to, like, put yourself in position to be good, and so that means, like, training hard and all that. You could take the influencer route where, like, you are a decent power lifter, but people tune into you for uh, tune into you more for your personality and shit, so then you're allowed to, you uh, put yourself in position to get different sponsors. Um... Yeah, I mean, those are, like, the only ways. So, I mean, starting a gym is not a way to make money, trust me. Like, <laughs> if, anyway, if, if, if anything, that's a money to leader. Like, it's going to eat all the money that you got. Ooh. Someone said the new formula. And increasing the membership fee. Uh, so, okay. The U.S. Oh, this is a good question, too. I just read something else. But anyways, the USAPL is now... Increasing their membership prices. Y'all motherfuckers been skating by with these prices. I ain't gonna lie to you. The, the memberships for the USA PL should be like $200. Bro, two, like, so I'm gonna do the math. And I've done this on another podcast too, but I'm pretty sure a yearly membership for the USA PL was so fucking cheap. Y'all, y'all have been skating by, bro. Two, it's 160. Yeah, it should be 200, 250. So if you divide 200 by 12, that's $16 a month. I think that the USAPL should have their prices at $250. You divide that by 12, that's $20 a month. That's what I personally think. You should, it should cost like $250 to renew your, your, your membership as, if, for the USAPL. To, to be in the IFBB or to be, a, oh, my bad, the, to be in the MPC, I'm pretty sure it costs way more than that. And y'all, personally, I think that members kind of skate through. Like, for $200 for a yearly membership is not a lot. In my personal opinion, you're paying $20 a month. And if you need to use, like, a, a different, like, a payment 
program or whatever, you need to pay in installments, then I mean, so be it. But when you think about it, bro, you uh, SBD be selling belts for fucking three hundred dollars. I mean, y'all motherfuckers be up on every new singlet or new knee sleeve that come out. So I don't know what the problem is. Like, whenever and I and the reason why I say that the USAPL needs to raise their prices is because when you give them more money. And I don't think that the USAPL is extremely corrupt or anything like that. If it gives the USAPL more money, it frees them up to do more things. Pay people because those people are not paid. The people that are work for the USAPL, I mean, some of them are, but some of them like are doing it for the love of the game, like the love of the sport. So if you pay them, it allows them to get freed up and actually give way more effort to make events better, to think of new things to do, um, to, to, to actually expand the sport. But the problem is, is that pouting in, in general is is pretty cheap. There's no like actual, there's no there's not a shit ton of money in powerlifting the way that there is in bodybuilding. Bro, bodybuilding, there's money fucking everywhere. If you're a bodybuilding influencer, you're just rolling in money versus a powerlifting influencer, like it's a lot different. So I think that, yeah, the USAPL needs to raise the price of memberships. I don't have a problem with it. But the formula thing, I mean, I don't really have a, I don't really have an opinion on that just because there's a new formula every two years. Like dots is, has only been for the past, like what, two or three years, maybe less than that. Um, IPF points is another thing. So I don't, I mean, USAPO creating a new formula is just par for the course, to be honest with you. Like that's why I don't marry myself to formulas. Like a lot of you motherfuckers be out there be like, Oh, like the dots is this, the dots is that, or like the, the Wilkes is that bro. I've, since I've done powerlifting, there's been like five, Maybe, maybe three to four different formulas. That's why I'm just like, yo, there's a new formula every single year. Like, at the end of the day, just be a good lifter, win your weight class, and then the rest is the rest. It's whatever. Was it by choice I went bald? <laughs> yes. Someone asked me this in Miami, too. Someone asked, like, what was the decision to go bald? Let me show you all my head. I mean, it's not, like, fresh baldy. You know, got a little got a little straggling hair coming in. But yeah, I went bald. I, I wanted to go bald. I've always wanted to go bald. It's just I couldn't grow a beard. I just wanted to see what it looked like. So I've had different hairstyles. I've had like super long hair. I've had like medium hair. I had like the 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 point five that was shaved down a little bit with the fade. I've had a mohawk back when it was cool when, when OBJ did it. Um what else? I also wanted to dye my hair. I've never dyed my hair before. So it was either between going bald or dyeing my hair blonde. I'm getting close to 30 now. So I told myself if I dye my hair blonde, motherfuckers are going to be thinking I'm going through like a midlife crisis or I'm going crazy. So just go bald. Um, I really like the bald look. It makes me look very mature. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it was, it was definitely by choice. I just wish I could grow a beard with it, but I just can't. So I decided to just go through it. Um, fashion topics, slept on brands, describe your style and corruption. So funny enough, I'm actually going to be doing more f- like, I guess, fashion content on my TikTok page. Um, I'm just going to be shit posting on TikTok at this point because the views are up and down or whatever. I'm still trying to like figure out like what I want to do on TikTok, but I want to start offering fashion advice. I think, I think, I, I think I got a little motion. I think I'm a little bit wavy. I wouldn't say I'm the flyest nigga out there, but I think, I think I could dress. So I'm going to be giving people tips and I'm going to be coming at it from like a unique standpoint because I'm short and I'm, and I'm stocky and it's hard for us to find clothes. And I've been finding that a lot of people are like, look at me, looking at me as like, yo, how do you dress? I like your style. Um, and we have like similar body types, but it's hard for me to find like shorts or jeans and shirts that fit well. So I'm going to be offering more of that on my TikTok. One of the reasons why I was kind of late for today's podcast, because we were supposed to start recording around 12, was because I was like recording a little bit, like adding some clips, um, because I was going to post a TikTok later today. But um, I'll expand more on that. I mean, fashion trends, trends are trends. I think like uh, early 2000s fashion is definitely back. And what that means is like big ass baggy jeans and shorts and shirts. And um, so that's in. How often do I recommend traveling to get a break from reality? I guess however much you need it. It depends on like what your life is. Um, are you someone that ro- that can work remote? Do you have a typical nine to five? Like it really depends. 
But sometimes you can't run away. <laughs> sometimes you got to tough through that shit. Um, Because that dude went off. What? Oh. People are really pressed about the Gymshark shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm getting a lot of questions about the Gymshark and Young Alicia. I mean, I already spoke on it. Also, I mean, I don't know if you can speak on it, Izzy. Izzy's off camera, but like, he, I mean, I will say he made some, um, he made some interesting statements towards the end. He said, uh, BLM. Yeah, I, I didn't like that part. Yeah, he's like, I'm not sure where he was trying to get at with that. I mean, he, I mean, I, w- I didn't watch the live or whatever, but I'm not too sure what he was trying to say, but he was basically saying like, fuck the Gymshark BLM, like, fuck the BLM gay did he say transgender and shit yeah he just went down the list <laughs> i don't know if he said like i mean he wasn't trying to say fuck black people i don't think he was trying to, <laughs> i don't think he was trying to say that but I, I i don't know why he added that in there maybe he doesn't like the fact that they support because there, there are people that that don't like that that support um just like i guess like social issues i actually like that jim shark support <laughs> I like that Jim Shark supports that. Like, I like that Jim Shark um, supports. Who's that one girl with the uh, hijab? Liana. I like that say that they, that they support her, bro. Like, that wasn't a thing back then. Like, having a fitness brand support someone that wears a hijab, like that wasn't a thing. And there's a lot of women out there that that do uh, fitness that also wear hijabs. That hijab, hijabs. I don't know if I'm saying that incorrectly, but wear that kind of stuff. And I feel like, for me as a black man in the fitness community and then also just being black in general representation is all is is very important to me um when it comes to the better brand i try to represent you know the things that i'm into which is like black culture so i try my best to find models that are black and include them because oftentimes when i look at different companies i don't see niggas i don't see black people i don't see like other races it's just white people and and there's nothing wrong with that but i'm black and i want to see me in the community uh, so I try to inject that a little bit. So I'm not sure what he was trying to get at with that. I don't want to say like he's saying like fuck transgender people, fuck black people, fuck um, I'm not, gay people. I think he said he he said gay shit too. So I don't <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to say. Um, I'm just gonna err on the side of like he just doesn't like how they try to I guess like cater to them. I'm not sure, but uh, I I like it. I don't, I don't see a problem with that. I'm not sure if I should shout him out. Like, I don't don't want to shout him out. I don't know him as a person, so maybe I'm shouting out. If I say, yo, shout out to old boy, then maybe he, like, be saying some crazy shit. I don't want to, like, put myself <laughs> put myself next to that to that dude. Mm. I think those were, like, overall the best ones. Swag size drip. Already talked about that. It's so interesting to me how people, I mean, I will say people don't, when it comes to fitness, like how, like, like in the fitness community, definitely, okay. The fitness community definitely houses the least waviest people I've seen on social media. Like, like people that do fitness don't know how to dress. Like I, so when I wear clothes, I don't want to, I don't want to look like I fucking work out. Right. So like what I mean by that is I don't want to wear tight ass clothes that accentuates my body. Cause that's a lot, like, that's not what I want. Cause that's not, it's not wavy in street fashion. You know what I mean? Like you want to wear clothes that like look good on your physique. Yes. But it's not, it's not cause it's like fucking hugging your legs. Cause you got big ass legs. I don't know how to explain it, but. I think oftentimes what happens is that like people work out and they start dressing to show that they work out. So like they'll go to the club and some tight ass fucking shirts. I'm like, bro, you look crazy. Like, I don't know. But, um, I think overall those are the best questions. I'm not too sure. Yeah. I already talked about that. Like, cause someone said, uh, (laughs) Thomas Wells, one, two, four said, uh, niggas talking down on your name because Austin Perks beat you and Taylor's total. I mean, I already said it, like, it's sports. It's all about uh, what happened recently. So people are always going to kind of, like, attach themselves to that. So 
Austin's going to be the GOAT until someone else comes along and has, like, quote-unquote, a better performance. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, bro. I think that's pretty much it. I just want to make sure I'm not missing out on good questions. I'm scrolling through and seeing. Yo, yo, people are really asking me why am I bald? All right. Pretty solid. Pretty, pretty solid. But anyways, um, that's going to do it for today's episode. Updates on anything going on over the next couple of uh, days before you guys hear this. I mean, shit, we restocked on the earth packs um, for the tank tops on the website. So if you guys go to thebetterbrand.com, shop the earth packs, they are restocked. Same thing with monochrome. I think we, we looked through the warehouse and did a recount to make sure everything was there. Um, yeah, shit. I mean, in the meantime, I'm just going to be looking for new spots for Corrupted Strength. <laughs> I'll, I mean, shit, the, the second that I find a new spot, I'm sure I'll post on Instagram and, and social media and all that. So make sure you're following the Better Brand. Um, I mean, make sure you're following Corrupted Strength, myself, and the Better Brand. I think that's pretty much it for today's episode, man. How, how, how long were we able to knock down? Hour 30? Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Pretty good. So maybe like an hour 20 ish, something like that, hour 25 or. Oh, so probably like an hour 30. Okay, cool. Yeah, pretty good episode, man. I think I'm going to just be throwing these in if we just can't find a guest and then we just want to talk on some like current topics or talk about catch up uh, on some personal shit. But um, once again, man, I think I say this every, every single episode, but thank you guys so much for the support on the podcast. I don't do this shit for the numbers, really. I just do this shit to get my shit off um, and feel like that I'm communicating with you guys on a consistent basis and um, also just giving you guys uh, good interviews and good podcasts and good talks, man. But um, yeah, on that note, that's it for the Better Take Podcast. I'm your host, Russell Orihi. Take a sip of this. And I'll catch you guys in the next one, man. Peace.